What's up guys, it's Avery. Hope you're all doing well out there. Today we have a video that I wanted to make, an item that I wanted to make alongside this video that I've wanted to make for a super long time now. That is the infamous Maison Margiela sock sweater, or I guess Maison Martin Margiela back when it was a thing. We're gonna dive a little bit deeper on this DIY sweater that a luxury fashion house has provided for consumers to make and why that coincides so well with the brand and its core values. Really interesting, and we'll do the DIY here, here too, so you guys can see the final product. That's it, let's jump right in. Maison Margiela is often regarded as the front runner of deconstruction in fashion. That is the act of breaking something down into its separate parts in order to understand its meaning. Following this simple definition, many of the same examples are used over and over to represent the Maison's deconstructive identity. Tops made out of gloves, purposefully unfinished clothing, and a red stained catwalk that was eventually turned into garments. I've even talked about that one here before on this channel. And it's no wonder these are some of the most sought after and expensive items out there that you can find. Approaching the ever so popular style from this angle, simply breaking stuff down, I think it's only one piece of the puzzle. When it comes to tearing up old vintage military items or fabric and crafting something new out of it, you also need to acknowledge the repurposing of said object and the reason behind doing so. Before we of course get to the sock sweater DIY, let's take a step back and look at deconstruction and Margiela, how they can work together on a greater than this practical scale that we've just mentioned, how it can apply to culture or the industry or just Margiela's core values in itself. Semi Couture is a perfect example. There are these beautifully broken down dress forms and patterns, pretty much the blueprint to how clothing is made, but it's also much more. So while these looks reveal a behind the scenes look at product development, they simultaneously speak on both the relationship of fashion and the standards of beauty, as well as fashion and the meaning of luxury, which is definitely something that we need to keep taking a look at in the future, and it's why I think that this is really deconstructing the industry, not just breaking down the clothing itself to make something new. Anyway, let's get to these socks, make something new out of them, and reconvene to talk a little bit more about the sock sweater and what it carries there. Step one, they break it down with materials, and of course I use the wrong ones. It says you need eight pairs of socks, and they need to be cotton or wool. Mine were cotton, but unfortunately they had a poly blend in them. Also look for a sock that has the same width ankle, or the same width calf opening, as for the foot. I think military socks work well, I think they make them in both cotton and wool, and that's actually what the Maison uses here. Super cool DIY style that's taken from old wartime knitting manuals, but it's also a bit confusing. It says eight pairs of socks, I ended up using four. The sizing is a bit weird. Step two is to create the sleeves right here. For the first sock, it says two pairs here, but you only use one pair, so I'm already confused. You cut the toe off these, the ankle that has that little bit of a cuff is going to be the cuff that's at the wrist of your shirt, which is awesome. And then the heel there is going to fit right into the elbow. The other pair is for the shoulders and the bicep area. You cut the toe off as well as the front of the foot off. You guys can follow it yourself, I'm sure. But the reason I'm telling you that is because then you get this really cool opening that fits right over your shoulder that you'll eventually sew to the torso. It's really cool. And you're actually going to cut off the top of this to make the collar, which you can either attach or not in the future. In order to make the body, you pretty much cut the sock dead open and cut off the toe. 
which then you'll need four socks, which is two pairs. So this one actually does make sense in step two. You have those four socks for the torso that'll just wrap around your chest. Three and four explain it to you with the elbows like I was just talking about, and five lays it out really well, where you have the shoulders, the opening for the shoulders, and then all the way down to your wrists right there. Six is talking about cutting stuff, but you've already done this. Seven is a really, really cool step. You take those four torso socks and fold them over. That way the heel is right in the middle, you guys can see right there, and this creates some darts. So you just sew right across it. I did a single stitch right there. Cut off the excess, then in step eight, you lay them flat and iron them. My home, for some reason, does not have an iron. And so mine's a little bit messy and wrinkly, but another reason is because I was using the blend socks. You 100% cotton or wool, which you guys will see in the future. Here they are all sewn together. And for the sewing process, like in step nine and step five, you're using an overlock stitch. That I think is mentioned in one of the first steps. Yeah, and in step one it says use only an overlock stitch. An overlock stitch helps for knit fabrics where it'll fray a lot. It pretty much is something that you can use. There are actually machines like sergers that do it all for you, but you can just use an overlock stitch or even a zigzag stitch on your basic machine at home. And what it does is it finishes the edge so it doesn't keep fraying, but a plus is that you can actually attach two knit fabrics together like this in order to really create a simple seam that's really hidden if you will and the way that you go about it is you pretty much turn the items inside out so that both of the faces are facing each other at least that's how you do it for this torso right here for the sleeves it's a bit more complicated you just put one inside the other with the outside one being inside out oh my goodness it's so confusing flip it out and it's attached. The sewing is on the inside, it's hidden, it's beautiful. You can see mine, they have like a lot of scalloping going on and that's because there is again a blend. It's really elastic, 100% cotton, 100% wool, I've said it a million times. With this, you just lay it down and you cut it, the torso, you cut it so it has a nice shape there. Look how beautiful those darts look, by the way, right on the chest. Not on mine, but in this tutorial. Then you just sew the sleeves to the torso and cut out the collar that's step 12. the front cut it down a little bit more than the back that'll just give it a better shape and then for the collar you can choose whether you want to sew on the cuffs whether you want to finish it with a stitch whether you want to leave it raw and have it fray up all crazy i left mine raw because i was patching up one of the armpits had a little bit of hole so i just did an overlock stitch when it was inside out and my bobbin ran out of thread right when I finished that patchwork, so it was perfect. Also, the sweater, you guys will see, oh my goodness, like 16 looks perfect here on a small female body. Mine turned out so, so, so small, so I don't even think Kaylee will be able to put this guy on. That's originally why I made it. It came out a little small, but it was a killer process. Learned a lot, experimented with overlock stitching, all of that really really fun my favorite part has to be those darts it was really cool turning a heel of a sock with a single stitch and just cutting off the excess fabric that was really cool really really cool here we go take a look at my final sock sweater There you have it, that is the Margella sock sweater, not only an explicit repurposing of military socks, which I of course failed to use, but also commentary on wartime knitting and just general resourcefulness that was absolutely necessary during the wartime. The DIY style itself, not only the making of the sweater, but also the way that it's laid out and how it teaches you is based off old uh, wartime knitting tutorials, which is super cool. Overall, it's just a great representation of the relationship between clothing and war, and really any basic good and war uh, for that matter. And I think the fact that it is now from a luxury fashion house put into the public's hand just really cements it as not only 
deconstruction in terms of breaking something down. Really cool stuff. The sweater was initially part of Margiela's Autumn Winter 91-92 collection, although at one exhibition it said 1990, which was interesting. One of the first times I really wanted to make this tutorial was when I got that Margiela the Hermes Years book in hand. I bought that when the exhibition started because I never thought I'd be able to catch it, but this past Fashion Week in Paris, there were two different Margiela exhibitions going on, both that Kaylee and I of course caught in one single day. The Hermes Years exhibition was actually revamped in Paris this time instead of Antwerp, and there was a sock sweater there, and there was two more at the other exhibition, which just is a huge archive of Margiela items. I'll leave links down below, of course, to the tutorial, to the exhibitions, anything that's applicable if you guys wanted to learn more. I'll just link some other interesting stuff down below. One of the first times that this was really published though, this tutorial, was in a magazine curated by, which is a magazine that's just curated by different people each issue and who better to do the first issue than Margiela. So it was in there, that is something that you guys might wanna track down, but it's so expensive for a magazine. I guess rightfully so. That's a really cool magazine though, if you're interested in more. But yeah, I guess that is it. That is the story of the sock sweater and deconstruction at Margiela. And I think there's just something deeper than just sewing a bunch of hand gloves or ski gloves or whatever else it is. And I think it should be recognized, especially at how the team in the early years, they're still doing a lot of great things now, but the team in the early years is being referenced so heavily nowadays by other fashion houses, and there's a reason for that, I guess, more or less. I guess that's it. Until next time, everyone do me one last favor. Of course, have a good day for me. I'll see you in the next video. Peace, guys. Take care.